Now, let's discuss how to perform the basic electronic test on the 3126B engine. These tests identify active faults, logged faults, and logged events, and consist of the injection solenoid circuit test, the injection actuation pressure test, and the cylinder cutout test. There are several electronic diagnostic tools that can perform these tests. The three most common are the electronic technician, or ET, the electronic control analyzer programmer, or ECAP, and ProLink, an aftermarket handheld service tool. Both ECAP and ProLink are basic tools that provide a simple LED readout of test steps and results. ET is actually a software package that's used on a laptop computer. ECAP and ProLink are different from ET in two ways. ECAP and ProLink have only simple LED readouts and cannot flash program new software into electronic engines. ET has several advantages over ECAP and ProLink. ET displays tests using full screen graphics, which makes tests easier to understand. ET can also capture and print test results for further analysis. Finally, ET can flash program new software into electronic engines. As previously mentioned, the 3126B engine does not have a replaceable personality module. ET is required to install new software on the 3126B. For this presentation, we will use ET to demonstrate the basic electronic tests. We do not cover the actual instructions on how to use ET. That's covered in the Caterpillar Service Tool Software User's Manual for CAT Electronic Technician. The form number for this manual is NEHS0679. We will show the screen and cursor commands to perform each test. The first diagnostic test identifies active fault codes, or active faults for short. Active faults are faults which are currently present and indicate a system malfunction or problem. An example is a shorted or open sensor, wire, or circuit. Let's look at an example. When no active faults are present, the ET screen will read no active codes. If we unplug the injection actuation pressure sensor harness connector, ET identifies this as an open circuit active fault after a few seconds. The ET numerical code for this fault is 164-3, and ET defines this fault as an injection actuation pressure sensor open circuit. Detailed information for troubleshooting this code is listed in the troubleshooting guide. Now, let's look at an example of log faults. When no log faults are present, the ET screen will read no log diagnostic codes. Here we see that the injection actuation pressure sensor open circuit fault has occurred 10 times. The first occurrence was at 3 hours, and the last occurrence was at 27 hours. The diagnostic clock indicates the total number of hours on the engine. It also indicates 27 hours. The ECM is capable of remembering up to 256 occurrences of a log fault. If the fault occurs more than this, the ECM will remember the last 256 occurrences. Now, let's look at examples of logged events. Logged events are generally not electronic problems, but they do indicate an abnormal engine condition. Examples of logged events are a programmed idle shutdown occurrence, engine overheat, or engine overspeed. These are not electronic problems, but are abnormal operating conditions. Now let's look at the injection solenoid circuit test. The purpose of this test is to make sure that there are no open or short circuits in the injector wiring harness, that all of the injector solenoids are working. We will also simulate what the test actually sounds like as it is running. To start the test, select the start button at the bottom of the screen. ET will then instruct the ECM to actuate each injector solenoid in order from 1 through 6. test will continue until the stop button is activated at the bottom of the screen. If an 
open or a short circuit is detected. The fault will be listed on the screen, and the defective circuit will not work. Now, let's look at the injection actuation pressure test. The purpose of this test is to determine if the pump can produce maximum pressure, if the IAP control valve is working properly, if the pump is worn, or if there is a leak in the system. The actuation pressure test evaluates the condition of the hydraulic system by asking the pump and IAP control valve to produce four different system pressures at idle speed. If the pump and valve can produce and control the pressure, the system is working properly. The four different pressures are 870 PSI, 1400 PSI, 2100 PSI, and 3300 PSI. This test considers three primary criteria. Injection actuation pressure, which is the actual system pressure. The injection actuation output, which is the percent of control current on time to the IAP control valve. And finally, desired injection actuation, which is the desired system pressure determined by the ECM. Now let's look at the EG screen before the test starts. With the engine off, actual pressure is zero, and current to the IAP control valve is zero. Desired pressure is about 870 PSI. When we start the test, you will hear the sound of an actual engine running during the different phases of the test. This engine is running normally and illustrates both the expected noise and variability of a properly running engine. Now let's start the engine and listen to what it sounds like at idle for a few seconds. When running the IAP test, it's important that the engine be at full operating temperature and at low idle. Performing tests below normal operation temperature or at any speed other than low idle will cause test results to be inaccurate and unrepeatable. When we start the engine, the test starts at normal idle conditions. Desired pressure is approximately 870 psi and the IAP CV control current is usually in a range of approximately 10% to 22%. Actual pressure should be in a range of approximately plus or minus 100 psi of desired pressure. The actual pressure reading may seem erratic, but that's largely due to the slow firing frequency of the injectors at idle speed and the data sampling rate of the ET. The low idle speed is necessary to make sure pump output flow is at a minimum, so that internal pump wear or system leakage shows up. Next. Select the step up button. The ET tells the ECM to increase desired pressure to about 1400 psi. Actual pressure should be in a range of about plus or minus 100 psi of desired pressure. Pressing the step up button again will increase desired pressure to about 2100. Again, actual pressure should be in a range of about plus or minus 100 psi of desired pressure. Pressing the step up button one more time increases desired pressure to the maximum operating pressure of about 3300 psi. And actual pressure should be in a range of about plus or minus 100 psi desired pressure. Controlled current output should be 65% or less. If the IAP CV control current is 65% or less, the system is operating normally. If controlled current is greater than 65%, the pump may be worn, or there may be a leak in the system. If controlled current varies more than plus or minus 2%, or if actuation pressure is erratic, the injection actuation pressure control valve may not be operating properly. Refer to the troubleshooting guide for specific instructions if any of these readings indicate a problem. When the step down button is selected, ET tells the ECM to go to an intermediate pressure of about 2100 PSI. Here we're just looking to see if actual pressure matches desired pressure in order to verify the IAP control valve is working properly.
We're not concerned with the IAP CV control current. Actual pressure does not match desired or is very erratic. The valve may not be operating properly. As you continue to step down pressure to the starting pressure of 870 PSI, actual pressure should remain within 100 PSI of desired pressure. 